Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. In reply to your letter of January 30th, we regret... Hello, Lottie. Good morning. Oh, well, Mrs. Brown. Gee, I'm glad to see you. I'm always glad to see you, too. Gee, you look good, Mrs. Brown. You're looking pretty good yourself, Lottie. Well, I am kind of fixed up today. Got an important date after work. I see. I'll call Mr. Norton right away. No, I'll go right in. He expects me. Go ahead. He's speaking on the telephone just now. Oh, well, then I'll wait here. Well, I'll let him know you're here, at least. That way he'll get through faster. Mr. Norton is always glad to see you, Mrs. Brown. Not as if you were his mother-in-law at all. (laughs) Is that so unusual? Well, you've heard mother-in-law gags, too, haven't you? (laughs) You know something, Lottie. I think there are fewer mother-in-laws in this world than people think. I wish there was one more. I wish I had one. Oh, well, maybe someday. Is your daughter coming in today, too? I know nothing, Lottie, except that I received a message to be here at the office at 12.30. Oh, Mr. Norton must have called you direct. I didn't put no call in for him. Oh. Mm, I guess your daughter will be in. You two are just like sisters, the way you get along. Habit, I suppose. Habit. Love and no kidding. Like Mr. Norton and her. That's love, too. Oh, there's Mr. Norton's light on the switchboard. He's through talking now. Hey, Lottie! I'll go right in. Don't disturb yourself. Hello, David. I'm here, right on time, 12.30 well, sharp. Well, 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 this is a surprise, Mother. I'm not your wife. I'm always on time. <laughs> not often here. I wish you'd make more of a habit out of this sort of thing. What sort of thing? Hmm? Oh, well, you've caught it from Claudia. I'm not making any sense. Now, there's nobody in the world that I'd rather have drop into my office unexpectedly than you. Now, now sit down. Rest your weary bones. Sit down. Well, what did you say? Unexpectedly? Now, don't apologize. That's what I said. No, now, David, listen to me. Well, don't pretend do you didn't often. leave a message for me to be here at 12.30. A message? Well, it wasn't easy for me to drop everything and come. What'd you drop? Well, now, stop fooling. What is it? Is something wrong? Is it Claudia? Is what, Claudia? Is that why you call me down here? Just look, Mother, I, I, I didn't call you down here. Well, Lottie said she didn't call. It must have been you. Now, say, I may seem thick in the head, but Ben me what? Who who told you that I called? Well, my cleaning woman, Minerva. Minerva? Well, she didn't say whether you were a man or a woman. Oh. She just said, be here at 12.30. Well, it was you, wasn't it? No, no, it wasn't this man or woman. David, it wasn't you? No, no, honestly, it wasn't. I wish it had been, but it well, wasn't. I wish I knew who that message was from. Well, what's the difference? Now, you're here, and that's fine with me. Now, David, it's funny. I don't like it. Now, Mama, just just, just what are you beginning to imagine? Oh, I was so sure it was from you. And if you're worrying because it wasn't, it's a lot of nonsense. Oh, I'm Believe not worrying. Me. Now, don't tell I'm me. I'm thinking. You're worrying. I know a good worry when I see oh, one. you know too much. You look exactly like Claudia when she's worrying, and now I know where she gets it from. David. Hmm? Is she all right? Well, Claudia? Well, Mother, she's fine. Look, if you have something to tell me, don't beat around the bush. Oh. Just tell me. Now, whatever you're thinking, the answer is no. She is fine. She didn't come to town with you. No. No, she kissed me at the station like a dutiful wife, and then she went home to tend the baby like a dutiful mother. Then the message couldn't have been from her. Well, of course not. Hmm. Whoever it was from, your Minerva got it all gargled up with the mops, and, and it's no reason for you to start imagining things, believe oh, me. Oh, I suppose you're right. Of course I'm right. Well, Minerva's a first-class gargler. <laughs> well, I'm on my way. Now, wait a minute. You're, you're on nothing of the sort. We're going to have lunch together, you and I. David, a man's office is no place for his mother-in-law. Now, don't argue with me. Especially an uninvited mother-in-law. I don't care. I am leaving. So am I leaving. We're leaving and we're having lunch and no back talk. Hmm. Bossy. Yes, bossy. It's the only way to treat you women. To treat Claudia, maybe. I still think it's funny about that message, David. Say, you know, Mama, maybe it was Claudia. Oh, she'd have left her name. 
No, Claudia thinks everybody knows her voice, even even Minerva. <laughs> she doesn't even know mine. <laughs> say, Mama, what do you say we call up Claudia in Eastbrook? What for? Oh, just just to get to the bottom of this. It'll put your mind at ease. Oh, my mind's at ease. It's a waste of money. Money? If she's there, she's there. If she isn't, she isn't. No, I know where Claudia gets it. Your daughter, Mrs. Brown, is the frugal kind of woman who reads the headlines of a newspaper on the newsstand and then doesn't buy it. And what's the matter with that? Oh, you are hopeless, both of you girls. Hello, operator. Operator, give me Eastbrook 276, ring three, please. Yeah. Yeah, person to person call to Mrs. David Norton. My number is Plaza 57099. Thank you. Girl talks through her nose. Now, in a moment, Mother... All of your fears and worries will be dispelled, abolished, and dispensed with. And if it wasn't Claudia, I still won't know who that message was from. Oh, curiosity, thy name is like mother, like daughter. You too. <laughs> oh, yes, operator. Mrs. David Norton from Mr. David Norton, person to person. I bet you spoke to her already this morning. I wouldn't put it past you. No, for once I didn't. I was tied up so I didn't have a chance. Uh, what, operator? Oh, I see. All right, thank you. Now, wouldn't you know it? Circuit's busy. Always, at a time like this. Now, it's still nothing to worry about. David, did she mention anything? Well? Come on now, think. Now, Mother, I am not going to worry about Claudia. Claudia's old enough to take care of herself. But is she bright enough? And she's bright enough to take care of you in the bargain, Mrs. Brown. Don't you forget it. Say, I know. Maybe you were the wrong number. David, I wasn't the wrong number. Well, you could have been. Well, if you'd lived with Claudia as long as I have, you'd know there was something to worry about. Well, hello, hello, oh, hello. Hello, nice Mama, you here already? Hello, David. Well, kiss, don't stand there looking at me. I'm sorry I'm late. Claudia, what are you doing here? Saying hello. Hello, Mama. Hello, David. Hello, Mama. Hello, David. Well, what are you looking so surprised about? Claudia, did you leave a message for me to meet you here? Well, who do you think called you? Would anybody else? Fresh. And why didn't you leave your name? Why should I now I ask you, Mama? How many people would ask you to meet you here at David's office? Hmm. I give up. I don't blame your mother. Now, Claudia, don't change the subject. Now, tell us. In words of one syllable, what are you doing here? Aren't you glad to see me? Yeah, I'm glad to see you. <laughs> Now, what made you come in town? For lunch. You came for lunch. For lunch. Now, I think I'd just settle for a kind word. Huh. You get words. Wasn't lunch in Eastbrook good enough for you? Now, hush up, Mom, and stop looking so surprised in the face. Where will we eat? Claudia, please, now. When did you decide to come into town? I didn't decide. I just did. Well, then when did you just did? Well, after I put you on the train, I went home, and that's when I just did. I told you she wasn't very bright, David. Claudia, is everything all right? Everything what all right? At home. Now, you come to the point, Claudia. Why are you here? So that you two would ask a million questions. Come on, I'm hungry. Let's go. Did you have to go to the dentist or something? Why? Do you have a toothache, David? Claudia, look, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, without any help from you whatsoever, why on earth you came into New York. I told you me. to have lunch and to, to see my lunch. poor old mother. Mm, our poor old mother, you. And I don't have to see the dentist. Well, just who do you have to see? Oh, do I have to see somebody? Honestly, I come into New York on the spur of the moment, and it becomes a diplomatic situation. Claudia, I never trust you with a spur of the moment. Claudia. Yes, Mama. Are you... Uh, well, I... I mean... Uh, well, go on, Mama. Come right out with it. Be blunt. After all, you're my mother. You would be the first to know. Go on. You heard her. You are her mother. Go ahead. Ask her anything. Then ask her, ask her, see what you got. I didn't get anything. Claudia, are you on your way to see the doctor? Me? The doctor? Do I look as if I need a doctor? Gee, I thought I looked pretty well in the mirror this morning. Well, you still look pretty well, but... but uh, uh, look, look, now, this is getting interesting. Go on, Mother. The, the floor is yours. Claudia, are you having another baby? Is that why you came to town? Am I what? You heard me. Are you having another baby? Did you come in to see the doctor? Now, why should I see the doctor, Mama? Because that's the first thing you do when you have another baby. Now, what would a girl do without a mother to tell her things? Then you are. <laughs> you little devil. Hey, just wait a minute. 
let me catch up with you two. There's nothing to catch up. Now, calm down. I told you I came in for lunch, not for a baby. You believe her, David. Well, when she's in this mood, Mother, I don't even know whether I'm coming or going. Now, look, let's just go out for lunch. Mama, now, come on. Let's go. David hasn't got all day to sit and talk. David, I give up. All I can say is that if this is why she behaves at home, you're a man of great endurance, endurance. great patience, patience, and I'm well rid of you. You are well rid of Oh, hello, hello, everybody. Hello, Claudia. Ah, uh, Mr. Killian. What a relief to see someone with a grain of sense. Come on in, Roger. There's room for you, I think. You uh, work here sometimes, don't you? Good morning, Mrs. Brown. Claudia, what a delightful surprise. How nice to see you. Is it? It is. It's like a breath of sunshine. I knew this morning it was going to be a beautiful day, and now I know why I knew. David, you have such a nice partner. You know, it's strange how the nicest men turn out to be architects. Mm -hmm. Well, I chose him with you in mind. Very thoughtful. Claudia, you're looking lovely. I have an idea. What? I'm going to take you all out to lunch. Not an everyday lunch, but someplace elegant. Roger, aren't you going to ask me what I'm doing in New York? And why should I? Do you mean to say you're not even surprised that I'm here? I'm delighted. Doesn't make you worry? You don't want to know why? Not the least bit interested. I'm only interested in the fact that you are here. Come on, let's all put on our coats and hats and go to lunch. Well, David. Well, Mrs. Brown, here is your example. Follow it. Here is our what? I you have follow it yourself. I finally found one person who takes me at face value. There she goes again, David. I finally found someone who looks at me and says it's nice to see you. Doesn't want to know a million whys and wherefores. Who isn't suspicious? Who isn't worried? Who isn't mistrustful? Roger, you're wonderful and I love you. Well, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Brown, do you know what this is all about? Well, um, it would appear, Mr. Killian, I have a very unpredictable daughter. Yes, and Mr. Killian, I married her. And believe me, it is exactly like having a romance with the weather. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Have you had a busy morning? Are there still numerous chores ahead of you? This may sound paradoxical, but you'll probably get through faster if you slow down, reach for an ice-cold Coca-Cola, and relax a few minutes. For Coke brings the pause that refreshes. And when you work refreshed, you get more done in less time. Every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs>